Good morning, and thank you for joining me on the Path to Liberty. I'm Michael Bolden with the Tenth Amendment Center, and this is the Fast Friday edition of the show for May 13th, 2022. And on this episode, I've got the latest data showing how the states have been increasingly wiping the floor with the feds, at least when it comes to marijuana prohibition. And no, this is not because the feds have somehow magically turned a a new leaf, turned over a new leaf and decided to be the good guys and just back off on an issue they never had constitutional authority to be involved with in the first place. It's actually in spite of the fact that the first 16 years, the feds consistently and aggressively ramped up federal enforcement efforts, and they even in 2005 had a Supreme Court opinion siding with them. I'll tell that story and more in just a moment, but first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. Whether this is your first episode or you've been here for every single one since day one, I can't thank you enough. But since it's Fast Friday, I promise to not take up too much of your time. Let's see if I can get this info out to you in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And I should point out that if you want to follow the show, if you want to be able to read and learn more, check out other episodes that I mentioned today, you have to follow us over at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash path to liberty. It's all spelled out. That's our show homepage where you're going to find all the archives, all the different platforms are on and even our membership program where you can put your financial faith behind our work for as little as two bucks a month. Again, 10thamendmentcenter.com slash path to liberty. And I will link to this. I want to first start by pointing you to another episode, actually one of my favorites, where we can discuss really important strategy on how to defeat any government program. Lessons from Nullifornia, part one plants from May of 2021. And when we talk about or think about the modern day nullification movement, that is states, localities, individuals in large numbers define the feds on a particular issue. We often point to Proposition 215, the Compassionate Use Act passed by voters in California back in 1996. But that didn't just happen out of nowhere. It wasn't just all of a sudden one day, well, let's do a ballot measure. It was actually the result of 25 years of activism, 25 years of hard work on the ground, a lot of stuff that we really, really should learn about. And I tell in that episode, I tell that important story. And this is the summary. It was a 50 year history of efforts by the state of California to nullify the feds cities in California to nullify the state and individuals to nullify them all. And as I mentioned in the outset, we also have to keep in mind that the feds haven't been going along with this in more recent years out of the goodness of their hearts. They're actually just getting defeated. They're getting beaten down by the resistance on a state, local and individual level. I covered that in some detail in another episode. It wasn't as good as the previous one, but this will tell the story of 1996 to today. And here's how I summed it up. Whether you're on board with weed or not, there's something to learn about strategy to move forward on whatever is important to you. And in that, you're going to hear about things like the 2005 Gonzalez versus Rach opinion, where the so-called conservative constitutionalist Justice Scalia wrote for the majority and held that growing six plants in your backyard, never buying or selling them, never taking them across state lines, consuming them in your own home was somehow under the purview of the federal government to ban under the interstate commerce clause. Clarence Thomas at the point at the time, love him or hate him, it doesn't matter. He was absolutely right where he said if they can have this kind of power under the commerce clause, Their power is basically unlimited. And on top of that, I talk about the first three administrations going after uh, these states and aggressively trying to ramp up enforcement year in and year out. But the states kept pushing back. And here's how I described it in a video. I think it was 2015. Even in the face of increasing federal enforcement measures, the states found the winning path. It's only a matter of time before they overwhelm federal enforcement capabilities completely. At that point, the feds will have to act like they've decided to drop the issue just to save face. And I'm not one to do a lot of predictions, but there I definitely, definitely called it. And as we see this particular prediction starting to play out today on the federal level before our eyes right now, we now have even more data just to show how effective this state and local level resistance 
has been. Here from an article we published just a couple of days ago by Mike Meharry. He said, while the federal government maintains a complete prohibition on cannabis, it's mostly a lot of bark with less and less bite. I like that analogy right at the beginning. Federal marijuana prosecutions have steadily decreased as more and more states legalize. What a surprise. We should have known this all along. And maybe we should start seeing states and localities legalize all kinds of other stuff, whether it's a substance that someone wants to consume or maybe a tool to defend their home and their family, something that the feds say they can't do. And so let's go through some of the key stats here. First of all, for trafficking, federal marijuana trafficking offenses or offenders prosecuted, we saw a 10.9% decrease. And let's not glaze over the numbers. I don't really get into too many numbers. Basically, 11% decrease from 2020 to 2021. Mike says the precipitu precipitous... I can never get that word right. This massive drop in federal marijuana trafficking cases becomes even starker. So 11% over one year. When we go back further in time, between 2015 and 2021, the number of these cases fell by 71.2%. 71% from 2015 to 2021. And from 2020 to 2021, another 10 or 11 percent. I'm very interested to see how it goes in the coming few years to see if it keeps going further and further and further. And if you go back even a little further to 2012, when Cal uh, Colorado and Washington state passed their full recreational legalization measures, the drop is actually over 85 percent. So an 85 percent drop in federal enforcement capability in just those number of years, about, uh, what, I guess, nine years if you're doing the statistics. But wait, there's more. Mike writes that there has been an even sharper drop if 85% or 71% or 11% in a short time isn't enough. It's actually even a sharper drop in federal marijuana possession cases over the last several years. So from 20 to 20, 2020 to 2021, it was a 50% drop half in one year. If you go back to 2015, it's 93.3% drop of federal possession prosecutions. 93%. And mind you, most states where they are able to, they're still participating in helping the feds do the enforcement. So it's primarily just saying, well, we're not going to prosecute on a state or a local level, and we're going to authorize, we're going to tell the people they can do stuff that you say they can't. And even in just that scenario, not even taking a super strong stand, we see a 93% decline in just six years. Normal political director, Justin Strakel, this is his name, I think. He said these um, legalization at the state level is driving the decrease in federal prosecutions. He said it this way. The continued decrease in federal criminal charges is correlated both to the increasing number of states that have legalized marijuana possession, manufacturing and distribution and the evolutionary nature of federal agents recognizing the increasing political liability associated with enforcing prohibition. So you get a one-two punch. They just lose the capability to be able to get as much done. And then over time, it becomes politically unfeasible for them to try to pull it off. Back to Mike Meharry, he says, as more and more states legalize and end state and local enforcement of marijuana laws, the federal government finds it more and more difficult to maintain prohibition on a naturally occurring plant. That's my ad. In a nutshell, the feds have a resource problem, and we know this on just about every single issue. I point out the National Governors Association has complained during these so-called fake shutdowns that the states and the federal government are partners on most federal programs. Of course, the dirty little secret that the supporters of the monster state don't want you to know is that partnerships don't work too well when half the team quits. And we can see that playing out right now year in and year out. Mike points out that figures indicate that it would take, uh, and we haven't looked at these numbers in a few years, but when we did a few years ago, it was about 40% of the DEA's yearly budget just to investigate and raid every dispensary here in Los Angeles, a single city in a single state. That doesn't include the cost of prosecution. Given this data, 
it becomes clear that the feds lack the resources to enforce marijuana prohibition without state assistance. And they probably lack the resources with state assistance. It just becomes so obvious uh, that they just can't get the job done anymore. And a lot of people used to tell us that the feds were just going to crack down. You could legalize all you want, but the feds are going to come in and shut this down. They have all this uh, power and control and they've got all the guns and this is just going to be over with. But Ryan McMacken over at Mises Institute put it this way. He said, while opponents of this strategy claim that the federal government would never tolerate states ignoring federal drug laws, they tried <laughs> as a quick aside, they tried, they've just failed. The opposite, Ryan writes, has happened. Rather than renew federal efforts to crack down on states that don't play along with the cannabis drug war, the federal government has instead retreated and grown increasingly permissive, moving closer toward formal legalization. I'd like them to just get the heck out of the way. I don't want the feds to do anything other than just leave it to the states for the states to determine how they want to do it. The states are, I mean, if you legalize, basically this is the federal government saying, hey, states, 37 states, that thing that you've been doing, even though we said you couldn't do it in the first place, well, now you can do it. We don't need permission from Washington, D.C., as my great friend Robert Scott Bell always says. Stop asking for permission where none is required. And then when you get down to it, Thomas Jefferson was right. Here he is in a letter to uh, his friend, the Reverend Charles Clay in 1790. He said, the ground of liberty is to be gained by inches. We must be contented to secure what we can get from time to time and eternally press forward for what is yet to get. It takes time to persuade men to do even what is for their own good. Well, I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope it was educational. Of course, if you support us, you like what we're doing, you want to help us spread the word more about the Constitution and liberty and how to defend both when the government refuses to, which, of course, you should know is constantly. Uh, please consider putting your financial faith behind our work. Our membership program starts out as little as two bucks a month over at 10th Amendment Center dot com slash members. You can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts or any other podcast platform. Smash the like on the video platforms, leave comments. All that stuff will trigger the algorithms of the platform and tell them to show us to more people. Again, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you learned something. I hope it was interesting. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next week here on the path to liberty.